resurrection and the life. He does not tell us to dig our heads in the sun, but the thing is not dead. He says, yes, it's dead, but in him it can be resurrected. And it's resurrected to be brought back to life. And so I pray for all homes and all relationships in every place, whether at work or in the community, that life and resurrection will come in Jesus' name. Amen. In Revelation 11:12, the Bible says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Many times when this scripture is quoted, it says we overcame, and in Jesus' name we will all overcome, and we are overcomers already because the, the, all we need to overcome has been given to us. We talk about overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. We talk about overcoming by the word of our testimony. But many times we're silent on loving. They did not love their lives to the death. And this is where we find Esther. Because Esther did not consider her own life. She demonstrated it that she overcame and did not consider her own life. But she lived. She lived because those who love their lives may lose it. But those who hate their life in this world will keep it on to eternal life. And so we celebrate Easter because Jesus gives us life. He gives us life. And that life can counter every area of death that you find in your environment. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. When Jesus walked the earth, that was when he raised Lazarus from the dead. From the dead. They saw it demonstrated that he's the resurrection and he's the life. They saw it demonstrated that he had conquered death. And testimonies abound about when Jesus lived on earth. He walked, he lived, healed the sick, he raised the dead. And this brings us to another point that I think is important. And this is teaching and training. Teaching and training. I believe they should be twins. To teach is to tell me that one plus one is two. To train me is to demonstrate it for me and watch me do my exercises till I get it. So to teach, perhaps, is to say it's good to uh, be hardworking. But to train is to say, come along with me as I go to work. Come along with me and see how it is when I'm at work. To teach is to tell me what to do. To train is to watch me and ensure I do it and get it right. As you watch me, I may fall, I may stumble, I may miss out one of the lessons, I may not get 10 over 10. But then if you are training me, you will, you will lift me up again and show me where I have made a mistake. And this is what we find Jesus doing when he walked the earth. Luke 10, 1, he says he sent out 70 people and he sent them out two by two. He was still on earth. They had watched him heal the sick, feed the poor, feed the hungry, raise the dead, and he sent them out two by two. That is his teaching and he's also training. Because if they make a mistake, he's still there to give them the correction. And so, Luke 10, 17 says, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So this shows us that before Jesus left for heaven, he was already training his disciples. He was already training them on what they were to do. He says, as the Father loves me, so I love you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And so there's a work to be done. There's a task that we are to be found doing. In Acts 3, 6, and this is after Jesus has been risen, there's a lame man found at the beautiful gate. And Peter said to that lame man, silver and gold I don't have. In Acts 3, 6, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He's now in heaven, but he remains the same. He's the same from age to age. He's God, he never changes. 
And in his name, we now have access to his power, access to Jesus, to all of us that believe. Only believe. Believe in this name, and you'll have access to his power through that spirit. Jesus walked on earth, and there was access to power. Now he's in heaven. We have access to that same power in his name. Scripture says to us that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it dwells in you, then you have that same power. It's found in Romans 8.11. Romans 8.11. But if, and please watch the if, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells within you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit which dwells in you. And that's why you have treasure in earthen vessels. The treasure is his, but he gives that treasure to you. That treasure is his spirit. Second Corinthians 4, 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. 